Hello Egyptology lovers, today we're going to discuss mathematics and geometry for the ancient Egyptians. Uh, I know there's a lot of it on the screen over here on this board, but don't worry about it. We're going to go very methodically through it and try to get through it. Now, I have a few links that I'm going to put in the description. I'm going to discuss a little bit of what I've learned through those links, but I'm not going to go in detail. I'm going to skip out on a few things and tell you just keep checking the links if you want more details. But I'm going to discuss just a single topic and combined with a few ideas. So that's what we're going to do. So the Egyptians. What, this is in regards to figuring out measurements and angles of pyramids, so the pyramids in Egypt. So the first thing you need to know is, let's go up to here. We're, everything is numbered through 1, 2, 3, 4A, 4B, 5, 6, and 7. So let's go to 1. So 1, I want you to know a few words. Second, this is what we're trying to figure out. The word second is the angle. So over here you can see that's where it is. If this is a pyramid, which it is of course, what is that angle? of elevation for that pyramid. This is what we're going to discuss in the video. And that's how it's written in hieroglyphs, Sikid. The Uchathebet and the Pyramus, we won't discuss in detail, just kind of briefly let you know what it means. The Uchathebet is the, is the base of the pyramid, and the Pyramus is the height. So that's how they're written. So over here is the Uchathebet and then the Pyramus, which is the height. All right, so that's all you need to know. Let's continue down to two. A few facts. Egyptians did not have trigonometry. They did not know about Pythagoras' theorem. And how we learned about the Egyptian mathematics of triangles and pyramids and circles and squares is through the Rhine Papyrus, uh, which is currently at the Berlin Museum, I'm not, excuse me, the British Museum. Or you can also check out the Moscow Papyrus in Russia as well. This papyrus was written by Ahmos, an individual who copied this particular text, and his name is written on the papyrus, and it's between, it's during the 1550 BC, during uh, uh, the intermediary period, which wasn't a dynasty when Egypt was split in two. All right, so that's all we need to know about that. Let's continue. Now let's discuss, or discuss measurements. In our current society, we have metric and imperial. The Egyptians used a different type. It's called the royal cubit. They had other measurements for liters, weight, water, height, air, and so on and so forth. Um, so in this case, we're discussing the royal cubit. The cubit was measured based on a pharaoh. And one royal cubit was equal to seven palms, which is seven hands. So a particular pharaoh had assigned a measurement based on his body, and they went through that body because it's a royal cubit. It's based on the pharaoh. We don't know who it was measured based on, but we've had this measurement later on throughout Egypt. Now, I'm not going to go through the equivalence of the metric and the imperial for the cubit. Uh, I'll just go in the link and check it out. So one royal cubit is equal to seven palms. One palm is equal to four digits, four fingers. And that's all you need to know throughout the video. I'm going to add extra things you don't need to worry about. Seven palms, which is right over here, is 28 digits because seven times four is 28. This I'll discuss at the end. One digit is equal to 0 0.25, and I'll explain it to you. Because one digit, there's four in a palm. So, of course, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and finally one. So one digit is divided into four. That's it. So let's have a look at what this looks like. Let's go back to this pyramid. Now, this is an example of a pyramid. I'll explain whose pyramid I'm going to use for measurements. But right over here, on this section, you see that this is also divided equally. If you come down like this to this, where the B line read, this is a measurement. So how do they do it? Well, they use this as uh, to teach students how to do their mathematics. So here you have one royal cubit, and then one royal cubit going up this way, so you know that's a perfect triangle right there. And over here, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven palms. And within each palm, you have three cubits. So one, two, three, and then the one becomes four, and on and on and on and on and on. So that's how the, the, the cubits, palms, and digits work. That's how the Egyptians did it, and I'll show you how this, form, how this whole process works at the end. All right, so now that we have the measurements, let's proceed over up here. Now we're going to get to the pyramid itself. In the pyramid, the Egyptians would use to find the base and then the height and then try to figure out the sicket right over here. What is the angle? Well, in this particular video, we're going to use an example to figure this out and how they, what formula they use to do so. And we're going to focus on specifically the pyramid uh, geometry, nothing else but that. So let's go over here. We're going to focus on the Hufu Great Pyramid. Uh, it's already been measured the base, which is 230.3 meters. So that's the base, the entire base. And 146.6 meters 
the height. So we know that that's the measurement. Again, this is not accurate, it's just an example. So the question is, what is the angle in trigonometry or sicket in ancient Egyptian? What is the sicket, the angle, right over here? Now, before we proceed forward, I'm gonna do something here because I need this information. We're gonna figure out what the hypotenuse is. I'm gonna do that just so I know what it is. If you know your trigonometry in high school, uh, the hypotenuse uses the, uh, to figure that out, which is basically the square of A and the square of B, uh, uh, A squared, B squared, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we use the hypotenuse and we come up to the number. Uh, the Pythagorean theorem, that's what we're using, the Pythagorean theorem to do that. So as you can see here, this is the formula, don't worry about it, and that's the answer, 186.42. You can check that out online to see how we came to that answer. So now we have our numbers, 186.42 and 146.6 for the height. Now this is a right angle triangle. Don't worry about this part. I split it in half to let you know how to figure this out. So half of 230.3 is 115, 15 meters. So those are the only numbers you need to worry about. Only worry about half the pyramid and worry about the right angle triangle right over here. 146 for the height, 0.6, 115.15 for the meter for the base uh, or the length, excuse me, and hypotenuse is 186.42. So that's our answer. All right, let's go back over here now. Now, once we have the hypotenuse, I'm gonna to explain to you how the Egyptians calculated the sicket by using what the information we discussed in three. We're gonna go back over to six. What is the sicket? The Egyptians' way of calculating it is by taking the base, so here's the pyramid. We take the entire base of the pyramid of, example, Khufu, which is 230.3. You divide it in half, which you see is the 115, so if you divide the pyramid in half, you get 115.15. And then you basically divide it again by the height, is on the very top here, the height of the pyramid, and then you multiply by seven palms. That's what you multiply by. Don't worry about what the palm is, just divide it by, just multiply it by seven. Now let's look at the math. So Khufu's pyramid, the base, multiply by a half, gives you 115.15, divided by the 146, and then multiply by the seven. So you could see here 0 0.79 when you divide these two, multiply by seven, and you get 5.5 palms. So that's how they did it, how they figured out the angle. So as I come over here, the angle of this particular pyramid that we're using this math for comes to 5.5 second. Now, how did I get the angle of 51.85 degrees? Well, I'll explain that to you shortly. So that's, I'm just gonna go back to this. That's how the Egyptians did it. This is the second, this is how you calculate it. This is the reason we're doing this video to understand what the second is all about. By coming back to this again, you take the base, you half that, divide it by the height, multiply by seven, and you get 5.5 palms for who? Khufu's Great Pyramid. Now, let's continue to number six. Coming over to six, I'm not gonna go again through this trigonometry. Uh, you can look it on, online, but this is how we figure out angles of our right angle triangles and other, uh, other shapes as well as straight, uh, as squares and rectangles, other type of things. But for this one, what we did, what is the degree over here? What is the, co uh, what is the angle here in modern time for the 5.5 sicket? Well, well, looking down here, we're gonna use our basic trigonometry. I'm not gonna go through explaining the entire detail here, uh, but this is how we achieve the, uh, the angle, by using our current mathematics today and you can plug this into a calculator or a scientific calculator and you pretty much can get the same answer I did. Uh, so by doing the by using this information, I'm basically using uh, A and C. So A and the hypotenuse over here, and then I can get that angle over here. But at the same time, I can do the same thing using a different calculation, and I can get the angle on the very top over there as well. So what happens now is you need to make sure that this is correct for you in modern time. Don't worry about the sicket at the, t uh, the current moment. So by looking down here, these two numbers work out perfectly because when you add them together, you get 90 degrees. You need to come to 90 degrees, exactly as over here. Both have to add up together to make 90 degrees. So you know you've achieved. So for example, 51.85 is your angle over here, which is 5.5 second. And your 38.15 is on the very top over there, 
And this right angle triangle should give you with these two angles, 90 degrees. And that's what you have right now. And that is the equivalent to 5.5 second for elevation in ancient Egyptian mathematics or 51.85 elevation for us. So that's the elevation of the pyramid of Khufu. Okay, we're almost done here, guys. So let's discuss something else. When the Egyptians did math problems, they took a simple example like this. Well, let's say this is our basic angle. So this is a perfect one cubit by one cubit divided into seven palms and three cubits each, which make four for each one. So four, eight, uh, 12, 16, and on and on and on. This shows, the dotted line shows you that this is a perfect measurement from here and there. They're identical measurements. So one royal cubit and one royal cubit and one royal cubit. And now that they have, their, they do their calculation where they came, let's come back over here, to the sicket and they got their answer by measuring the base and figuring out what the height is and then doing their mathematics and coming to 5.5 palms. Well, guess what? They take this example that they have and they find their 5.5 palms. So they go one palm, two, three, four, five, and you count one and two. Remember this here over here? That's a quarter. So two of them makes 0.5. So two palms, one, two, three, four, five, one and two, and there it is. And you draw a line straight up to the pyramid and that is your angle of elevation. So that's how they know that this is Hufu's angle by 5.5 sicket or 5.2 palms, or not, palm, not 0.2, but just five and two. So five palms and two digits. So five palms and two digits, which equal to 5.5, sick it. Now I know this is a lot of information, guys, but again, everything's in the links. I just wanted you to expose you to how mathematics was done in ancient Egypt. I learned this also on my own. I got this some information. I was just very interested. I wanted to share it with you, but you should definitely check out the links and read the two websites. They're not very long and just kind of learn a little bit about how measurements were done and check out uh, the Rhine papyrus and the Moscow papyrus for more information. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave comments below. I'm sure I made a lot of mistakes and said a lot of things, but again, you have to check out the website to just learn a little more or check out some uh, YouTube videos as well. So I hope you liked this tutorial and this lesson uh, and exposing you to the geometry of pyramids in ancient Egypt.